Hello everyone. Welcome back to Noteworthy ENT. Today we are going to discuss about sudden sensory neural hearing loss. The sudden sensory neural hearing loss is a medical emergency and as it is a medical emergency it requires prompt treatment and early diagnosis is therefore key. Now coming to the definition there are numerous definitions which are described in literature but the most accepted one is by Wilson et al and according to it a hearing loss can be defined as sensor neural hearing loss when there is at least 30 decibels of sensor neural hearing loss in more than 3 contiguous frequencies in less than 3 days so at least 30 dB of hearing loss in more than 3 contiguous or adjacent frequencies in a time span of less than 3 days now coming to the epidemiology part, the incidence is around 5 to 20 per 1 lakh people per year. Any age group can be affected with the peak incidence is seen in 5th to 6th decade of life with there being no gender predilection. The hearing loss is usually unilateral and bilateral involvement is rare and there is no side predilection. Now let us discuss about the etiology. Now there can be multiple causes of sudden sensory neural hearing loss but the most common one is idiopathic which is in 80 to 90 percent of the cases. Other causes can be infectious with various viral infections such as Epstein-Barr virus, herpes simplex virus, herpes zoster virus and HIV along with meningitis and syphilis can cause sudden sensory neural hearing loss. Various autoimmune conditions and menius disease can also cause this condition. Trauma which can be either barotrauma or trauma to the head or ear can also cause this. Cerebrovascular diseases and neoplastic diseases such as angioma, meningiomas and schonomas can also cause this along with autotoxins and genetic causes being the other factors which can be culpable. Now let us discuss the clinical picture as I have already discussed this is a medical emergency with the most common presentation being that the patient notices the hearing loss on awakening. Some people may notice a sudden stable or a rapidly progressing loss. Sensation of oral fullness is common and can be the only complaint in a lot of cases. There may be a de variable degree of tinnitus and vertigo which can be present. Now let us discuss how we will evaluate a patient of sudden sensory neural hearing loss. Now we can eliminate a lot of potential causes on the basis of history and a careful history is very important. Now in examination we can rule out any causes of the external and middle ear which is then followed by Pyotone audiometry and speech audiometry which consists of speech reception threshold and speech discrimination score. The basic blood investigations which can be carried out are a routine CBC ESR, urea electrolytes along with the lipid profile, blood glucose and thyroid function. We can also rule out syphilis and autoimmune diseases with the help of autoantibodies such as ANA and ANCA. Now the radiological investigation of choice is a contrast enhanced MRI with gadolinium which is to rule out a retrocochlear mass lesion. As 1 to 3 percent of the patients with sudden sensory neural hearing loss can be due to cerebellopontine angle tumors. And when there is spontaneous or post treatment recovery that does not rule out a CP angle tumor. So we should ideally do a CE MRI to rule out CP angle tumors even if there is recovery which can be spontaneous or after treatment. Now let us discuss the treatment part. Sudden sensory neural hearing loss can be due to various causes. If there is a clearly identifiable cause that can be dealt with according to the etiology. However, we will discuss the treatment of idiopathic sensory neural hearing loss as it is the most common. Now because of the poor understanding of idiopathic sudden sensory neural hearing loss, there is controversy regarding its treatment 
the first line of therapy be oral corticosteroids we use oral prednisolone in the dose of 40 to 60 mg per day for a period of 7 days which can be tapered in a further 3 day course now there are also suggestions of use of intratympanic steroids which provide a direct route for absorption into the inner ear via the round window membrane it can also minimize the side effects of systemic steroids as oral corticosteroids carry a significant adverse effect profile for intratympanic steroids we use dexamethasone in the dosage of 12 to 24 mg per ml and multiple injections can be used over a few weeks period there have been recommendations of the use of combination of oral and intratympanic steroids however conclusive evidence of efficacy of steroids is still lacking some other treatment options besides steroids which are available to us are carbogen which increases the cochlear blood flow and oxygenation carbogen consists of 5 percent carbon dioxide and 95 percent oxygen However, there is no conclusive evidence of the efficacy of carbogen in sudden sensory neural hearing loss. See, there is a school of thought that sudden sensory neural hearing loss occurs due to decreased cochlear blood flow. So, we use these agents to increase the oxygenation of the cochlea. So, carbogen being one of them, another one is hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Here we use 100% oxygen at a pressure which is greater than 1 atmosphere. It is also thought to improve the oxygenation of cochlea. It has been found of some use in the first 3 months. It can be used as an optional therapy. However, it is reasonably expensive and has a limited availability. Other vasodilators which can be used are low molecular weight dextran, heparin, pentoxyphylin. However, there is no conclusive evidence of their efficacy either. Other agents being antivirals with the same story that there is no conclusive evidence of their efficacy. Now some points regarding recovery and prognosis. When do we say that the patient has completely recovered or there is partial recovery or no recovery? So complete recovery is when the recovery of hearing is within 10 dB of original PTA or SRT threshold that is within 10 dB of the original hearing. Partial recovery is when there is recovery to within 50% of original hearing and no recovery when there is less than 50% of recovery of original hearing. Now, most recovery occurs in the first 14 days or 2 weeks of the hearing loss. Now some points regarding the prognosis. Complete spontaneous recovery is seen in around half of the patients. And there are four variables which affect the prognosis. Firstly, the severity of hearing loss. Now, more severe the hearing loss, poorer the prognosis. Shape of audiogram, upsloping and mid-frequency losses have a better chances of recovery rather than a downsloping or a flat audiogram. Presence of vertigo is a poor prognostic factor. Also, the extremes of age, that is children and age more than 40 years, as poor prognosis. So, we'll just recap quickly. Now, sudden sensory neural hearing loss is a medical emergency. The definition, most accepted one is by Wilson et al., where there is at least 30 dB of hearing loss in more than 3 adjacent frequencies in less than 3 days. The incidence being 5 to 20 per 1 lakh people with there being no age or gender predilection which is usually unilateral. Idiopathic being the most common cause. Now clinical picture, most people 
notice the hearing loss on awakening however a sudden stable or rapidly progressing loss may be there some may have only oral fullness tinnitus and vertigo may be there on evaluation mainly we conduct a pure tone audiometry and a speech audiometry the radiological investigation of choice is a contrast enhanced mri with gadolinium to rule out a retrocochlear mass in the treatment the most commonly used agents are oral corticosteroids prednisone used in the dosage of 40 to 60 mg per day for 7 days followed by a 3 day taper intratympanic steroids can also be used which may help in minimizing the side effects of steroids and a combination is also recommended in some studies other agents which can be used are carbogen hyperbaric oxygen therapy some vasodilators or antivirals however there is no clear cut evidence of any of them in recovery a complete recovery is said to be when there is recovery to within 10 db of original hearing partial recovery when the recovery is within 50% of original hearing no recovery when there is less than 50% of recovery of the original hearing prognosis a complete recovery spontaneously is seen in 50% of the patients when there is the more severe the hearing loss poor the prognosis upsloping and mid frequencies losses have a better chances of recovery presence of vertigo and extremes of age is a poor prognostic factor now that this concludes the lecture on sudden sensory neural hearing loss now if you have any further questions please leave them in the comment below and please like the video and subscribe to the channel thank you